Hello, Bobby Torres of Frightbox recording here, critiquing Subscriber Mixes episode seven. So before we begin, I just want to say this. We have to remember that mixing is an art form and is extremely subjective. So all of this is just my opinion and what I feel will help the mixes that I hear with the minimal amount of tweakage possible. In other words, I'm listening to what the subscriber has sent me and just giving my two cents on what I feel will improve the mix. And that's about it. It's just my opinion and that's all there is to it. So we have a full stack of mixes to go through today. Uh, so without any further ado, let's get right to it. And our first mix here comes from Mr. Drake. Let's check it out. Okay, so Drake, I really like what I'm hearing. Now, you mentioned in your email that you're having issues blending all of your tracks together. Um, and the one thing I gotta say is the editing sounds spot on. It sounds like you took a lot of time making sure all the performances were tight. The two things that stand out to me uh, that I feel maybe you could tweak are the snare drum and the lead vocal. Let's start with the snare drum. Now, it sounds like a snare sample or maybe programmed drums, uh, and it sounds like a one shot. What I recommend doing is if you're gonna use a sample, make sure it's a round robin and that it's triggering multi samples within your program. That'll help make it sound a little more natural. Again, maybe there is a round robin happening within here, but uh, I would definitely make sure to dive into your snare drum and try to make it sound as natural as possible at the source. That'll really help with the blending of your mix because right now it has a slightly mechanical feel, which could be a good thing if that's what you're going for. But if you want it to sound more cohesive and a little more like a live band, pay attention to that snare. And the second thing I've noticed is that there's a lot, a lot of top end kind of gargle happening on a lead vocal, which is completely natural, has nothing to do with the actual vocal performance. What you're gonna wanna do is use a high shelf EQ and just roll off some of that extra top end that might be clashing with the cymbals. That alone will help clean up your mix. Cause right now we hear a lot of like, ah, like a lot of that super duper high frequency on the vocal, just really kind of outshining the cymbals. And you don't want that. You want to reduce that as much as possible while still keeping the vocal sounding nice and present uh, and in your face. So don't worry about what the vocal sounds like in solo. Worry about what your vocal sounds like in context of the rest of the mix. And a lot of times you'll end up rolling off way more top end than you'd think. Again, with a high shell filter, not a low pass filter. You still want to keep the high frequencies. You just want to reduce them. So Drake, hopefully that helps and keep you posted on your progress. Okay, and mix number two comes from Mr. David. Let's check it out. <laughs> Okay, well, David, I really dig the old school black metal vibe of your production. And I know you mentioned in your email that you're struggling with your actual, you know, output volume as far as mastering is concerned, and you're wondering about exact levels. And dude, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't pay attention to that at all. I do it all by the apparent loudness of the master. And I gotta say, your master sounds pretty loud. Definitely loud enough in the world that we live in, which is the world of streaming. We have to remember that these streaming platforms uh, usually level match without any control of the mastering engineer. So in my opinion, this is just my opinion, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Your mix sounds plenty loud and don't get too caught up in numbers. That's just my philosophy. Now this is an old school sounding black metal production, so I know you're probably not going for absolute clarity and I feel you've nailed the production. It still sounds clear enough where I can actually make out the riffs, which is a good thing. But uh, yeah, man, it sounds great and I wouldn't worry too much about volume. Just do it by overall feel and the apparent loudness of the track. And again, yours sounds plenty loud. Thanks for your submission. Okay, and mix number three comes from Hadi.
Okay, well, Heidi, I dig what I'm hearing. Super brutal. Uh, I hear those kick drums are like crazy fast, like 64th notes. I don't even know, maybe 128th notes. They just sound insanely fast. But I know with tech death like this, that's pretty much the sound that people are usually going for. Now, I just want to say this. The one thing that stood out to me, uh, if you're going for mixed clarity, take those rhythm guitars and bring them down. They are crazy loud right now compared to your drums, which will overall give your mix a more cloudy, kind of like a less clear vibe. Uh, a lot of times people think that their mix is muddy, and in reality, it's just because their drums are too quiet against their guitar tracks, especially rhythm guitars. Now, if you're a guitar player, like I am, I know it's so tempting to make those guitars super loud, but then we end up with issues with the guitars clouding the rest of the mix. So my main piece of advice, my first reaction here is to just take those rhythm guitars and bring them down a few dB. Thank you for your submission. All right, our next mix here comes from Steve. Okay, well, Steve, I really dig your production and I really dig the song as well. I don't know if you're gonna take this as a good thing. For me, it's a good thing. I'm kinda, you know, it gives me nostalgic vibes of kinda like new metal. You know, what was happening in the early 2000s when I was in high school. I hear a little bit of Disturbed, a little bit of maybe Stained, even a little bit of Coal Chamber in there. Um, anyway, I dig it. Music for my youth. Now, overall, I love the production. I'm gonna be honest with you. I love the guitar sound. I like the sound of the roominess around the drum set, especially the snare. Uh, I wouldn't really change much about this. I don't hear anything that stands out that I feel is detrimental to the mix. The only thing that I found slightly distracting, and again, this is just an artistic choice, is just there's a lot of crazy panning happening with the lead vocal. And we have to remember that vocals are what the average listener is paying attention to most. So you don't wanna make that too distracting for them. Now, I can handle it as a musician, but we have to remember most people that are listening to music are not musicians. So again, really cool effects happening with the panning on the vocals. You might just want to chill out a little and just kind of, you know, bring it grounded at a certain point in the song. And that's pretty much my only piece of advice here. I really dig the mix and keep me posted on your project. I'm curious to hear more. Okay, and mix number five comes from Christos. <laughs> Okay, well, Christos, I really dig that guitar tone. I like the snare. The snare has like very slate drum sample sound to it, which is cool. Um, my only question is, where's the bass guitar? Is there a bass guitar in here? If there is bass guitar in here, you might want to turn that up a little. And that is by far my main critique of this mix. So turn that bass guitar up and keep me posted on your future productions. I'd like to hear more. Okay, and mix number one, two, three, four, five, six comes from Garrett. Let's check it out. Just want to say this, I didn't see that major key change happening. Pretty cool. Okay, Garrett, I really dig the production. Again, that riff was really cool how I switched to the major key for a second. I just love when music is not always predictable and I did not see that coming at all, which is cool, uh, but in a good way. It wasn't like, uh, it didn't sound out of place to me. It sounded really musical and just really fresh. Um, my main 
comment here will be much like with the last mix. I don't really hear bass guitar. I do feel the frequency a little. So if that's something you're going for where you want to feel the bass more than hear it, then mission accomplished. But if you want to hear your bass guitar, I would suggest, you know, blending in some bass distortion with your main bass sound. So take the DI track, duplicate it, filter out all frequencies below, I don't know, 700 Hertz and all frequencies above 4K, distort it and blend it in. And your bass sound will be much more obvious on smaller speakers, which I'm listening to on right now. So Garrett, killer riffs, killer production, and thank you for your submission. Just try blending in some distorted bass and you'll be in good shape. Okay, our next mix comes from Karami. Okay, Karami, I love what I'm hearing. The mix sounds very professional. Again, much like with a few of the others, I can tell you've taken the time to edit, which is excellent, which is something most people don't take the time to do. And you're definitely doing it, which just takes your production to that nice professional level. Uh, my only piece of advice would be to lower your rhythm guitars when the leads kick in, just to give some more space for your lead guitars. It feels like when the leads kick in, they're sort of drowned out by the riff that was happening previously or the same kind of, you know, guitar work that was happening previously. So in other words, once the rhythms are over with and you know, you want your listener to pay attention to the leads, just automate the rhythm guitars down by a dB, dB and a half, and that will go a long way with just making your mix sound a little more focused when all those leads are happening. Because the leads are awesome and I wanna hear them more and I wanna be more focused on the leads and not so much confused on, you know, what I should be paying attention to do. But the mix overall, as far as EQ, balance, uh, songwriting sounds top notch, I love it. So Karami, thank you so much for your submission and keep up the awesome work. All right, and our final mix here comes from Carl. Stop Okay, Carl, excellent guitar work. I just want to say that the guitar work sounds killer. Uh, cool guitar tone, cool riffs, overall cool songwriting. The one thing I'm going to want to say is much like with other productions mixed by guitar players, maybe you're not a guitar player, but I'm willing to bet you probably are. Guitars are too loud. Rhythm guitars are too loud against the drums and even the vocal sounds a little loud. So you want to make sure that your rhythm guitars are just tucked in a little and also try clipping your snare drum just so you have a little more attack on your snare without it actually being physically loud in the mix itself. And that'll kind of help keep your drums in control while keeping guitars, you know, a little more in check and bringing your vocal down and, and it won't feel like everything is kind of stepping on top of one another because all of your EQ sounds pretty solid. I don't hear anything weird going on with panning. It sounds like an overall solid mix, just slightly out of balance, at least in my opinion. So to put it simply, lower your rhythm guitars, maybe clip your snare so it cuts through a little more and just lower that lead vocal and I think you'll be in some pretty good shape. Again, excellent work and keep me posted on your progress. Okay, so I would just like to shout out and thank everyone for submitting their mixes. Now, if you're interested in submitting a mix for me to review, uh, there are detailed instructions below in this video's description. Make sure you read them before submitting a mix because I do have a few conditions in the description that I want you to follow before sending anything. I also want to say this, there are so many things that home studio owners tend to gloss over and I don't want that for you. I want you to achieve truly professional results with the gear you already have. And this is why I've put together my polished production checklist, which highlights the main categories that most people just tend to overlook when they're working in a home studio. So download the free PDF and it'll help point you in the right direction. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. If you'd like to pick up some Frightbox swag, there's a link below to the Frightbox merch store. We've got t-shirts, mugs, and other cool stuff on the way. So be sure to click the link and check out the Frightbox merch store. And until next time, Happy mixing.